kind of person who doesn't like waiting in a queue? Well, if you are, then you're in good company. Today we'll be sharing stories from our past, playing some games, and maybe even performing a live sketch or two. Let's continue to pull incorrect curtain cords for 10 years, (laughs) grab your knitting needles and a blanket, because it's time for three old friends to sit around and sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. So join me, Dion, under the covers with Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. Before we get started, so you two know that we record at Christian's mum's house. Christian, you know your mum very, very well. Um, And usually when we get here, we'll start preparing. And then usually about half an hour later, Josh will disappear. And he disappears for maybe, I would say, uh, eight to ten minutes. And I'm always thinking, oh, where's Josh gone? Josh never announces this. No, no, that's not what you say. (laughs) What do I say? You look at me because I haven't cottoned (laughs) on. Because Dion is is obsessed with this. (laughs) Obsessed. And he'll look at me and goes, Josh is going to take his shit again. (laughs) (laughs) And so it doesn't, Christian, it doesn't seem to bother you. But invariably, Josh, when you come to this house, you go and take a shit. And it's within half an hour coming here. And my question within is... Within half an hour. It's <laughs> something about walking into this house. No, it's not. <laughs> I'll tell you what is. We're about to sit down and record for about an hour. You can't hold for an hour. Why would I want to? What? Is it always there? That, that's, it's always It's yeah. always it's just waiting. Yes. I need to... When I need to go to the toilet, I need... Like, I've got like a two... It's like a two-minute warning. Oh, <laughs> a two-minute really? warning that flashes. Oh, and no. I'm like, I need to go to the toilet. And But Josh, you think that... It, more to the point, you think it's okay... To come to someone else's house and shit in the house. Yeah. I just think that's crazy. Why not do it at home? <laughs> Dion, I think, I honestly think, and this does go back to uh, patch 34 with Andy. Yeah. Um, I think it's completely fine. I take zero offense at all to Josh using the facilities that are provided for him. <laughs> it's, it's how he leaves them that's <laughs> the issue. <Yeah. laughs> Wait, these aren't the, the these aren't the facilities that are provided to him. These are the facilities that exist here. So, so you're saying that you guys have to poo? We well, have to leave here if you have to go poo and go back home. No, that Josh should be taking a shit at his own place and not do it. Not just going. Oh, I'm 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 going to Christian's not, place. I should not just take a shit when I feel like doing it. No, it's also because your poos really. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Dion go. <laughs> the truth comes out. I'd love to see Dion's calendar every like three hours. It's scheduled in. Do you, Christian, you don't think that's weird, don't you? Do you like when you go over to someone's place and doing a poo at someone's place? I thought you were going to ask if I liked when Josh pooed. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I like? Yeah, no, of do, course I like it. So you like doing it at someone else's place. You prefer to do it at someone else's place than I, your own? The reason that I like to at other people's place is because I like to see other people's toilets and bathrooms. Why? Because isn't aren't you curious about what other people, how, how they've set them up, the smells, the sounds... No, that's not true. Well, the sounds. Do people have wind chimes in their bathroom? (laughs) Some some people have. No, just more so how the echo works. (laughs) Um, Josh, Christian says, like, uh, don't you love seeing that? Is that something that you. No, it's because I need to go to the toilet. I'm not (laughs) thinking about it beyond my own biological needs. But why do you always do it here? Why don't you. Why do you. I just explained to you (laughs) because we come here. I'm like, okay, we're about to settle into a thing. I want to make sure I'm ready and I don't, I'm not going to feel like, you know, anno- not annoyed, but, you know, a bit pent up. and like, oh, that's on my brain. I've got to go to the bathroom. So I'll go beforehand and then I don't think about it at all. I'd only dream of having control of my bowels yeah. like that, I reckon. That that's sounds unbelievable. Dion, I actually, I feel for you quite a lot that it's you've only got a two minute warning before. Yeah. Two, if that. <laughs> no, but the thing I think you're missing is I'm not every time going, I'm going to go take a shit right now. <laughs> It's, I'm going to go to the toilet and I'll see what happens. Oh, oh, and you know why that happens with Josh? Haven't we covered this before? You're a sit-down weeer. Oh, every time. So for me, when I go to the toilet, I know when I'm oh, weeing, I'm pooing. You, you have choice. no idea. No, it's I a lottery. Yeah, I don't make the choice. <laughs> the choice makes me. What? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't sit down wee, Dion. No, of course I don't. You know What do you mean, of course I don't? Well, I, I, sorry, I'm with 98% of the rest of the male population that doesn't sit down <laughs> no, and wee. No, no, no. You're with 98% of the male population who that doesn't listen to patchwork. Who, who don't admit it yet. They're yes. too scared to admit it. <laughs> is this something futuristic? I reckon. Is this side by I side honestly, with AI? <laughs> I reckon that we take a poll, and I'm sorry to exclude the females here because it's the, it, predominant. We have the choice to stand or to sit. Oh, there might be some women that stand up and we. <laughs> I'd love, I'd love to know, <laughs> but I honestly believe that you'll find that it's a fifty-fifty split, if not more, towards the sit. That is so dumb. We're gonna. We'll have a poll. We'll have a poll on dumb. Instagram I'm sorry, page. What's dumb about keeping it in the bowl? It's no, no, safer. no. There's nothing dumb about that. It's dumb. Well, it's that not you... safer, Josh. There's nothing safe about it. <laughs> no, it's like yeah. it's, it's not more precarious to stand. <laughs> You're not gonna slip. 
Wait, what no, are the it's, benefits? It's safe. It's safe in that you don't have to direct anything. <laughs> that yes, okay. it's just always getting in the danger yes. zone. But it's unsafe in terms of you know not knowing what the hell is happening when you walk through that door. <laughs> are you thinking like some bear attack's going to occur <laughs> and you'll be able to run off? Whereas we'll be stumbling <laughs> yeah. over between our legs with our pants <laughs> out. Dion's still scared of the shark out of the <laughs> toilet bowl. <laughs> So I went to buy salad last week uh, for my lunch. Well, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Great opening. What a, what a bagger of a story this is. Uh, no, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I went to buy salad at the local salad place uh, for lunch for, at work. And I stood in the queue, as you do. It was quite a busy period, the lunchtime service. And I noticed that the guy in front of me wasn't paying attention to the line and he, w- he seemed to be on his phone and the line was moving ahead of him. So because there was quite a big line behind me, I thought I'd give him a quick prompt and I was like, hey, mate, uh, <laughs> the line's moving. And he turned back at me and said, I'm not in the line. Oh. Bizarre. Surely if you're going to be standing and waiting in a restaurant, the onus is on you to maintain as much distance as possible from the line. If it's a small place and it's hard to dictate who's in the line and what's not in the line, just just put a hand up. No, not me. You go ahead, mate. For me in life, there's nothing worse than being in a line. I ha- I hate waiting in lines. It's something that, you know, if I see a line outside of a pub or a bar or something, I just don't want to be there. And and on New Year's Eve, I went to a bar and I ha- and there was this huge line and I had friends waiting inside and it was a massive line. I went to the front and, and I, asked the, I asked the bouncer, how long do you reckon there is? And usually you get... You sort of get them. Sometimes they're a little bit helpful, and other times they're like, oh, "I've got no idea, mate. Just, yeah. just just head to the end of the line." Yeah. So I did that, but I met two really lovely people in the line, really? and it got me through. Great. Like it got me through the whole forty-five minute saga. I would have 45 hated it. Forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes. Isn't it amazing that you're out that night to have fun, yeah. and you spend forty-five minutes waiting to have fun? And sometimes <laughs> you'll wait to have fun, and then get to the front of the line, and they'll tell you, "Sorry, no fun tonight." <laughs> yeah, I don't usually get that, Christian. That's something that you got when you were younger. You used <laughs> yes, to get, I did. You used to not be able to get into places. Often, often, I would go out with the anticipation that the line was the fun part of the night. <laughs> So you hope that you'd stay in the line for the longest time possible. Yeah, yeah, how long's, yeah. oh, no, how but- long's the wait tonight? Oh, half an hour. Oh, that's great. not great. Yeah. Two hours. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Guys, stay in the line. It's right here. <laughs> but the, the weird, to follow on from the salad place, in the time of me realizing that this guy was obviously not going to move and I'd have to go in front of him, two guys who were further at the back of the line just moved in front of the guy and took the spot in front of me. Nah. Now, is any gap in a line fair game? Everyone stresses out that a queue gets like half a metre, a metre. Like, just relax. Yeah. It's really long. We're mm. not going to go anywhere, especially in like the yeah. airplane ones where it is the snaking yeah. one. It's like, yeah. you can see, no one's going to magically jump ahead. I could wait here for 10 minutes, let 10 metres open up, and no one's moving any quicker. Yes, but if the gap does open, Josh... And a stranger pops in there. Is that fair for them nah, to no say way. you you was you snoozed, therefore you did <laughs> lose? No, no way. You absolutely just maintain the order of the queue. And the other thing that I I struggle to do, and I managed to once once in my life successfully do it, <laughs> is the queue. I was at this Japanese curry place in QV, and it was at the door, and that was just starting to press out into the main thoroughfare, and it's like guys. You're just going straight back. Yeah. There's people oh. having to walk through the queue. So when I I kind of got there and there was maybe one or two Great. people and I just snaked it around the corner Brilliant. Right. and kind of had a big body turn to be I like, hey, that. we're in the queue and we're running along the side of the building, guys. <laughs> Josh, you must have looked so oh, yeah. distorted. <laughs> no, because it was like they were going straight and then this weird guy was like half on the edge, which was me. But then they started going behind me and I successfully turned the order of the queue around the corner. That's so systematic. I've seen Josh before. We both walked to the same salad place yeah. to get lunch before and he'll see the queue and be like nah that guy there should have pivoted earlier yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly right because you know when you're backing into a thoroughfare and it's like people are going to be coming through you the whole time do you yeah. know that thing when there's a gap in the queue and you've got people just walking along the street normally and there's a gap and yeah. you, there's always that trepidation where you think are they cutting in front of me no yeah, they're just, yeah, try, they're yeah, just yeah. trying to get past they're just trying to get past it's fine <laughs> what about when it's a big group of friends yep. and then 
a couple of others tag along and join that group in the line. What do you reckon, Josh? This is this is this is one of life's quandaries. It's hard to know if they're allowed to join you. Like, uh, what what, are, what is the expectation that they go at the the end of the line? Yeah, it, it depends on the nature of the event. So if you're like waiting for a bar or something that is kind of a one in one out thing. It's way worse. But if it's like everyone's going to get in eventually, it's just going to add a bit of time. But we had, I was lining up for a gig. These two people in front of us, a couple of their friends came. A couple more of their friends came. Uh, a couple many. more. By the end of it, they had about 10 more people <laughs> right in front of us. That's like, way too many. What they could have said, those friends that joined, was, hey, we're just with our friends here. Is it cool? Like, it's just yeah. having, it's the I'd awareness, the it's the thoughtfulness. Time. And you know what I do to that? I go, yeah, yeah I don't mind that like, you can go behind me then. And if the people behind me don't give a shit, no worries. I give a shit. You can go behind me. Yeah, that's interesting. But what I'd love to see, though, with my system of I don't mind, you can go behind me, is if everyone did that and it was just, I don't mind, you go behind me. I don't mind, you go behind me. And they just slowly get pushed back and back and back till someone goes, (laughs) yeah, that's fine. You can can cut in front of me. That's what what you want them to say. You want the person who's being cut in on to go, yes, you're allowed to cut in front of me. I'm okay with it. Yes, I agree. I think that would be the ideal situation, Josh. And now it's time for Oh Wow of the Week. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. Like their fur, tigers have striped skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was on an evening walk with my girlfriend the other day um, and this car was coming the other way along the road and there was two cyclists riding side by side. Plenty of room, no other cars coming. The guy could have easily just driven around, no issue. Just got on the horn. It's like, you didn't need to do that. Could have gone straight around. And it made me realise that, and, and it was, you know, that's a mild form of road rage. Yeah. But I was started to think about what how I react in, not those situations, but, you know, when someone cuts you off or something like that. Yeah. And I feel I'm pretty the same every time I do it. Like, it's not this, you know, I don't go and chase people and get in my car or anything like that. But the thing, the kind of things that I say, I was like, I pretty much say that like every time. Every time anything yeah. happens. And then Ellen she said that she's like, I think I picked mine off my mum. And it was, ah, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but what I wanted to do, I wanted to ask you guys if you have sort of similar things. And, and I, I don't imagine any of his like big road rages. Um, but I kind of want to know, in a very real sense, what it's like to be riding in the car with you and maybe someone cuts you off, you have to slam on the brakes, that kind of thing. So I'd love to, to sort of find out what that's like. I'm pretty hot on the horn. Like, I like oh, I like wow. pressing my horn. I don't do a prolonged horn. And I think that I do a double horn when I want, a double beep or whatever it's called, when I want someone to move. But if <laughs> yep. someone actually, like, cuts me off or is going through a red light and I'm turning right, I'll, I'll whack down the horn. I'm very liberal, uh, very liberal with <laughs> the horn. I, I'm just imagining that DJ sound, the horn. <laughs> 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 Coming out of if it's a really bad, he's on the explosion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame that they. It's a shame you can't play different sounds <laughs> in the car. How have they not? Yeah, because MP3 I, uploads. <laughs> how have they not come up with something that allows you to put like a friendly horn? Ah, oh, so this is. I had this idea. I had an idea, and I thought this is. I, the I best. love that you think that you had this idea. <laughs> this is a, such a good idea. I reckon there should be some sort of LED panel in your car that, depending on what part of the horn you hit, it lights up with like a smiley face or a frown. <laughs> So right. like so if I, if someone's in front of me and they haven't mm-hmm. moved when the lights turn green, I do a double tap and you see a big smiley face <laughs> because the problem with road rage is you I think you can't see people's faces. That's yep. the problem. You can't yeah. detect emotion. But I think one of the best things that I do when I feel someone else's rage coming at me is smile at them. Like force like yeah. forcibly look at them and keep smiling so that's and don't break your gaze. That's something that I've been doing. So when someone is so I, tailgating is my most hated thing. I hate when people tailgate. It's hell. It's um it's very unsafe. And what I've been doing is when someone tailgates me and then finally overtakes me, I turn around to them on the side and just make a ridiculous face. Yeah, great. <laughs> ridiculous face. Yeah. I'll post it on social media. I'll take a photo of me. Someone can take a photo of I'm me. I'm going to tailgate you. <laughs> <laughs> but Christian, um, before we came in, I gave you some sound effects. Yes. So we've got a car. So what I want to do, I'm going to pretend we'll go through all of this. Yep. But we'll start with you and me, Dion. So we'll be riding in the car. I'll be driving. Yep. And then at some point, Christian, you're going to, an incident's going to occur. You're going to do the sound cue for that. <laughs> yep. And we'll see how I react. All right, there you go. Just fire up the old world car. <laughs> um, so just get this. There we go. Um, <laughs> so, Dan, how's, how's work been going? This seat is very far forward. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How's um, work though? Uh, it's good. Yeah. I, I thought it'd be um, much quieter, quieter at the start of the year. Yeah, but it's, um, 
Is it, do, you, do you like start strong or is it sort of a slow build up? It's, the there's week? a slow build up, but because yeah. the jobs with the school terms, it's kind of, yeah. yeah. How about you? Is it the same kind of thing? Um, it's oh, Jesus. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking idiot. I think I've said, heard you say that before. <laughs> So that's me. I, I, G, a long to say Jesus. Comes, yep. Jesus <laughs> is very common for me. So do you want to switch now? And Dion here, I'll give you the steering. We've got a steering wheel if you guys don't know. Um, did you end up going to, on that hike on the weekend? Uh, yeah, it went to 1,000 steps. Um, How many? 1,000. 1,000, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It's kind of nice to do stuff like that, you know, spend a bit of time away together and you get a bit of fitness and that kind of stuff in, so... It's always nice, and you feel a bit better. You know. Oh Jesus! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Such a fucking idiot! So dumb. <laughs> so dumb is great. <laughs> so dumb. All right, Christian. <laughs> now, if you're to be driving, and I'll take over, and I'll hit the screech. You can be driving with Dion, mm-hmm. and I'll take over and do the screech for us. Okay. Are you, so you're going to get AirPods? Because I don't think they look any good. They look like cotton buds coming out of your ears. They but look terrible. Oh, so now that it's saturated in the market, don't you think that it's fine to wear them if everyone's wearing them? No, I don't think that's... No, not necessarily. Why don't you just get... You could get like $20 earphones. Fuck work. me! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> what was great? Uh, you can't see. It's intense it, stuff he as well. He shuddered. <laughs> I forgot you are going to play it. <laughs> It came so much sooner than I was expecting. So you go and shut. Fuck me. Because <laughs> I'm all. I'm very much on the individual. It's all about the individual. <laughs> like, fucking yeah. idiot. You idiot. You're an idiot. See, for me, it's yeah. I like. I I don't want to put the hatred on the person. For me, it's all about the safety of the car and the fact that it could have ended right then. Yeah. Really, I hate the person. Yeah. Absolutely hate the person. Especially when it's a dumb decision. It's like, that was a choice you made and you made the wrong choice. Yeah, and you'd know that being Josh, the self-confessed best driver in the world, Bloody you mate. would know when people make dumb decisions yeah. in that situation. Do you hang on to it? Will you, If you're driving behind them, will you go, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm really going to stare off this person well, for with ages. That, that look, the turnaround look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that, I, I think I just want to know who the hell it is. I want to know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Or if it's, is it like an autonomous car <laughs> or is it, you know. I kind of throw it away though. I'm like, I have the moment. And because I'm also of the mind of, yeah, everyone kind of has shit days every now and again. And um, you don't know their full history if they do that ev- all the time. But I don't want to get into a staring match. I don't want to see them. Because I had a guy once who, mm. it's, it was a long bus lane for a less, left turn. And so I kind of went in and I think I probably probably cut the guy off a little bit. And he cracked it. He massively cracked it. Wow. We got around the next corner and he mm. sort of came up, pulled up, like not pulled up and stopped, but like drove up. We were still driving next beside year, yeah. me and was having a go. And it was like, I had my pee plates on. And he was like, this is why people of your generation are all bloody dead. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my he, God. Yeah, so he like, and, and, and I think that for me as an experience is like, I don't want to let something like that get to me that yeah. much. I love that in the spur of the moment, that's what came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing else. Something incomprehensible. For me, it's living in Australia and us not having a gun culture here. If we oh. lived in the States, I don't think I would have the guts to look around and stare up this person because you get a gun pulled on you. Oh, absolutely. Like, I, I feel like I'm a, a passive aggressive when, when someone does something to me yeah. or I do something to someone accidentally and they get upset. I'll just ride real slow. And I will upset them deliberately while driving like 10, 15 Ks under the speed limit. But along those same lines, it's like when I used to play football, I used to pick fights with people that were much bigger <laughs> because I was quick and I knew I could run away from and they, them. And they don't have guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I know that sometimes I stuff up and I do the wrong thing. And if that's a, I do the biggest kind of middle car hand yeah, wave, yeah. sorry thing I yeah. can, because it's like, yeah, I know I stuffed up then. I probably, you know, came across a bit late or whatever. And I'm genuinely sorry. There's nothing nicer than seeing that because you can't see the person person's face but you see the hand go up and you're like oh good yeah. oh good all, all diffused isn't it amazing that that one gesture of a hand rising in the air yeah as long as it doesn't have a gun yeah <laughs> imagine the difference <laughs> shot through the roof <laughs> damn it that's my car <laughs> Words have the ability to change us, to shape us, and to define us. These new words are unlike anything we've ever delivered before. We want to bring you new words to enhance your vocabulary. Now, we want to bring you these new words with the power of Patchword of the Day. 
Jack had always been afraid of heights for as long as he could remember. To conquer his overwhelming fear, Jack decided to go bungee jumping. Jack stood on the edge of the 150 metre tall bridge with a vast canyon below him, ready to jump. Three, two, one, stop! The guide said. You forgot to take off your... Wind cheater. (laughs) (laughs) The patch word of the day is... Wind cheater. (laughs) Christian, your patch word of the day. Thank you, Dion. The bird frantically swooped towards the park in search for more branches. The storm was imminent and she had almost finished building her nest but couldn't find a twig small enough to fill the final gaps. If only the bird had remembered to pack her... Chainsaw. (laughs) (laughs) The patchword of the day is... Chainsaw. (laughs) And Josh, your patchword of the day. It was his first day and the new warehouse worker was nervous. He was sweating profusely and could feel his heart racing. He'd just been asked to drive the forklift and move a pallet, a task he'd never done before. As he sat anxiously behind the wheel, he turned to his supervisor and said, I think I need a... Demonstration. (laughs) (laughs) The patchword of the day is... Demonstration. (laughs) As I've mentioned previously on the podcast... My girlfriend lives with Josh in their share house. And it's obviously nice to be able to spend time at your partner's house Mm -hmm. and stay the night. And it occurred to me, and I became cognizant, and more recently very cognizant of it, that perhaps, you know, there's a line that you can breach for how many times a week you can stay over. Mm -hmm. When do you need to start contributing to that person's, in this circumstance, Josh, Mm. Your, your rent, your utilities. Is this something that you've thought about? Is, um, is my presence <laughs> now that akin to a roommate? No, no, not at all. Okay. I I don't even... It's so rare. I, I don't even notice you're around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's different when you're it's a unremarkable. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the other thing. Like, it's, al- it's always a pleasure to see Christian. So, when he is there... That is almost well, the nicest thing you've ever said to me. What a lovely thing to say. Yeah, well, compared to, like, you know, if someone's got a so partner... Compared you, to me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What a burden that is. No, I mean, compared to like, you know, someone has a partner who you don't really know at all and you see them, you know, flash in the night kind of thing. Um, But no, I like, I don't notice how many times you stay over. So to me, that makes it completely fine. Unless it is actually interfering with me and my normal routine and how I like to use Mm. the house, then I would be on top of a bit more. But I I reckon my my metric is, I reckon you've got three times a week. I reckon you've got two midweeks and one weekend. Really? Yeah, two I midweeks. I reckon two, uh, fuck, three in total. That's quite a lot. That's quite onerous. That's a lot. I think so. Like, uh, I guess uh, the circumstances are also important, right? How far they live away from each other, how long they've been going out for. <laughs> no, I don't think that matters. No, it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what a time to do that. No, I, 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 does it factor into it at all if the partner uh, stays over at my place? Yeah, I think that's huge. I didn't realise that, but I was talking to someone else about this. I was talking to Verity about it, and she said, yeah, but if they spend a lot of time at the other person's house, mm-hmm. that frees up your house. Yeah. So you've got heaps more space then. So heaps. I think I think they're allowed probably to stay more often if that person, your housemate, is staying away more often. For yes. me, it doesn't yeah. actually matter the regularity or how many times they stay at your house. I think it's, it matters what they do at the house. So if they're if they, if you wake up in the morning and they're there raiding the, the kitchen and pouring yep. milk all over the floor. And for, and for Dion, I'm sure... If they're taking a shit it's a big issue that's right they should hold on till they get to work but yeah i think it's about the conduct when you're there if you're a very respectful visitor and also if you bring to the table some like whatever it is that that those people like in the morning so if it's conversation they like or if they like silence or whatever it is you need to bring the ruckus so you're (laughs) saying so you're saying that i have the onus on me to provide the entertainment if I'm going to be coming and staying, I better be bringing something. It's not so much the entertainment. It's to bl- it's to blend in. It's to blend in with everything. It's just to make yeah. sure that you're not a big imposition you in the house. You should be non-noticeable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, speaking of noticeable, one of my housemates, who is now an ex-housemate, used Let's to... Get stuck in then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and she doesn't speak English that well. <laughs> um, but it's a list of patchwork of the day. <laughs> Where's this dirty windsheeter? <laughs> 
Wind cheater. <laughs> Um, but she was single and she was having a great time in Melbourne. And that's the wow. most polite way that I can put it. But for some reason, it's like she had a rule that was, hey, it's 6.30, get out of my house. So at AM or? AM. So at 6.30 oh. AM, uh, whoever she had brought home was in the shower. Oh, no. Oh. And I would wake up like a regular person, yeah. go to the shower and find that it's occupied and go, well, I mean, it, it might be my other housemate. So I'd kind of wander out and wait for the shower, you know. Oh, I don't want to be late. And then you see someone you don't know get out of the bathroom. The first yeah. time you're meeting someone is when they've been occupying your shower. <laughs> Put out the hand to shake your hand and the towel drops. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most frustrating things, I reckon, is when you want to have a shower if there's someone else in the shower. Yeah, <laughs> just in general. That is so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it's so frustrating. Because you've got it in your mind, I'm having my shower <laughs> yeah. now. But there's so many other things that you could, like, there's so many other things that I'm not frustrated by, but that is, I don't know why. I, I'll tell you why. It's because every single timetable that you make in your head for the rest yeah. of the day is always centered around yeah. when will the shower be yeah the moment that that shower is taken <laughs> you're out of whack you're going to be late well yeah. so it's really interesting in the current house that i mean it used to have um a couple of housemates and we literally only had 10 minutes of hot water and then you'd have to wait half oh, an hour no. so it's about rationing it out and then of course if someone who's staying the night who doesn't pay the rent is taking that last bit of water it builds massive amounts of resentment oh absolutely towards the person or towards the housemate uh, towards the the um the the water the, the water <laughs> cylinder <laughs> <laughs> so much so The many. hot water system <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point Christian What you just said then Is the resentment Towards the partner Or your existing housemate How much is it up To your existing housemate To be like Hey I think you're Staying over a bit too much It's not for my housemates yep. Well I'll say the onus Is on the existing housemate Like what I try to do We shower together so that we don't take twice as long in the shower That's Very nice. interesting But does showering together Make others in the house Uncomfortable Why would that Make you uncomfortable I didn't used to love it no, 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 no I wasn't. but it's it's something it's something that I've been you know I've lived with um, couples. I didn't used to love when they're in the. I, I don't want to know when they're having sex. Hey, I don't no, want to know no, when they're no, having no, a shower. No. Do you take a shit with your partner as well, Christian? Well, presumably, the door's open. Presumably, you can't, Josh, because you're doing it all at Christian's place. <laughs> no, Christian's talking about morning showers for the morning routine. Yeah, morning showers, morning routine. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't you like. You just don't want to hear two people together having fun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> two wet people. <laughs> No, do you know what do you know what I mean, Josh? I know what you mean, but I think in the context of a morning shower, it's a non-issue because you know that's not happening. No one is taking no, no, a no, leisurely. No, no, no. no, wait a minute. Sorry, I, I must have missed that. The morning showers, we're not showering together because who wants to shower their partner in the morning? Why not? Isn't that what you're talking about? As if about? you want to spend time with each other in the morning, that close proximity being wet and still waking up. Because... No, I'm talking about at the end of the night no. if you're taking your like evening shower. Oh, I thought you were talking about the morning shower to be like, I don't want to be in imposition on everyone else for their morning routines. We're going to go in together That's what and I half thought. the time. I don't shower at your place in the morning because I don't want to be that guy. You're out at 6.30. I'm <laughs> out of there. Yeah. And so, then I wait at home. <laughs> so wait, so why wouldn't you do that in the morning? Take a shower with your partner. That makes much more sense. Because Especially my place is like a five litre tank. <laughs> oh, but I'm not going to get into the dynamics of why I don't shower at Josh's place. Just know that I don't. <laughs> my other big question is, I think the size of the house matters. If you've just got yeah. two people, having a third person stay over a lot is a massive change. Yep. Whereas if you're in a bigger house like ours, like four or five people, one extra person doesn't change that much. One shower, yeah. Josh. I <laughs> know we're back to showers, but yeah. one shower. Yeah, we all five of us <laughs> together you every have, morning. You didn't have a photo of the tank, do you? Just to... <laughs> it's got an angry face on it. <laughs> Dion's in the market for a new one. <laughs> So if anyone listening out there, <laughs> hot water tank service. Who's a hot water tank provider? Breville? Reeb. Not Breville. <laughs> no, Breville. They're just toasting <laughs> the water. It's a kettle. <laughs> no, it's uh, Reem or Rinai. Oh, yeah. Rinai Infinity. Yeah. 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 So given that your housemate does start to breach that line, let's say, mm. where their partner is over, let's say, Josh for you, three nights a week and maybe both weekends... Mm. Do you give them the feedback directly? Do you do you sit them down? What Oof. do you do? How do you give feedback to your yeah, housemate? I've never had to do it, but I think I would. I'd probably talk to the other housemates and go, hey, do you think this is becoming an issue? I think you've got to get cons a consensus. Mutiny. Well, no, you've got to get consensus and be like, hey, is this an issue for you guys or is it just something that's annoying me? Okay. Well, yeah, there's there's the cons there's water, there's electricity, there's yeah, oats. I don't, nah, I don't factor the water and yeah, electricity no, in at all. I don't care that much. It's more the space. It's more just, yeah. this is my house. Get out of my house. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's amazing how much we prize space. Yeah. Like, it's that feeling of when you come home, you're like, I'm home. If you go camping somewhere, the moment you put your bags down, set up the tent, you're like, I'm home. Let's go home. Well, that's something that I love to do. When I get home, I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to get home. I want to yeah. have a shower, lie down, <laughs> have a shower for two minutes, lie down. <laughs> you you lie <laughs> naked, though, most of the time, don't you? Uh, I, I, I like lying naked. It's the, it's the benefit of living uh, with your girlfriend on like together on your own. It's the it's it's the it's the benefit. <laughs> the but benefit. I think even if I lived alone, I would still wear clothes. Why? Because I don't want my stuff rubbing up against the other stuff. I'm with Christian. Really? Put something on. No, but I'll, I'll put a towel underneath. <laughs> <laughs> then you That's may as well put pants on. A towel is inconvenient. You have to pick it up and Just carry it around with get you. Get some Terry toweling pants and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we also we also live in Australia where it's very hot. So during the summer months, yes, I do like don't to roam around in- naked. I hate when people give that impression to overseas people. It's like, oh, we live in Australia and it's very hot. No, Christian, Dion, we live in Melbourne. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. Christian, it was 40 degrees today. We're currently sitting in this studio. <laughs> we are sweating to death. It's a perfectly reasonable explanation. I'm freezing. <laughs> Dion, put some clothes on. <laughs> Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Do you know what's really good? Carrying multiple bags, but evenly distributing the weight across your body. <laughs> really, really, good. Good. Really, good. really good. Really good. Do you know what's really good? When you find a good piece of furniture in hard rubbish. <laughs> really good. <laughs> really, good. Really, good. Really, good. really good. Really good. Do you know what's really good? Meat from a butcher in a paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> really, good. Really, good. really good. Really good. Really good. Uh, and we love hearing your really good, so make sure to jump onto Instagram, Facebook, Twitter for our really good Fridays and make sure to submit your best really good for, to be in the chance to win some awesome socks from Otto and Spike and some Welcome to Patchwork stickers. And as per always, we like to read out one of our recent winners. You know what Ezekiel Franco G thinks is really good? When the person sitting next to you on the bus gets the cue that you're about to get off at the next stop, so they make way for you and you don't have to say, excuse me. Uh, really, good, really, really good, good, really good, really good. And you know what Jesse Heiss thinks is really good? When your friend offers to be the designated driver. Really good, <laughs> really, good, really, good, really, good. really good. And you know what Via the Loop thinks is really good? The first time you trust a fart after having food poisoning. <laughs> really good. Really good. Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork this week. That's a wrap. And if you want more content throughout the week, please go to our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for more cool stuff. And you can also find some extra content at our Patreon page. That's patreon.com forward slash welcome to patchwork. We've received heaps, like heaps of feedback <laughs> yeah. from our most recent uh, Patreon clip. Here's a little snippet. But but this is the thing. I was like, I'm going to sell this anyway. You know, can I can I sell it to you guys? Even you telling the story, you know, <laughs> you know, as you tell the story, you're. I can see your no, mind going. No. How do I make myself so, sound better? So tell me, if I'm contributing a TV to our podcast, why should I be out of pocket? So that's something that our patrons get every off week. And if you want to hear it, just sign up. And we do have our live show coming up. We're still organizing and finalizing the details of the dates and location and stuff. So sit tight for that. But be assured it is coming in the next few months. As we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh, what did you sew into your quilt this week? Dion, my patch this week was me managing to turn the queue of single men lining up for Christian's shower around the corner and down the stairs. (laughs) (laughs) Christian... What patch did you sew this week? <laughs> Josh, I sewed into my patch a very sweaty Dion becoming frustrated and stripping down to reveal the stripes on his skin <laughs> after arriving home from work and hearing his showering news. <laughs> and Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is me standing on the edge of a bungee bridge and hearing Josh yell, You pushed in front of me, you fucking idiot! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patrick this week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. Goodbye. Win cheater. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you want me to put it in your beard or just put it in front of you? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'll kick this one off. <clears throat>